Hello and welcome back everyone. Hope you're enjoying these videos on Over the Wire of the Bandit War Game. Uh, my name is John Hammond and we are jumping right back into level 11 where we left off on the last video. Um, we've got the password saved, storing it in this uh, file that we're reading out through some bash command substitution, passing it to SSH pass so we don't have to enter the password each time uh, and just running with that user for our SSH connection. So once we log into the level, let's check the prompt for this. Password for this level is going to be stored in this file data.txt where all the lowercase and uppercase letters A through Z are rotated by 13 positions. Huh. Okay, so we've got that data.txt file and we can assume this is trying to say the password is all this nonsense, but it's shifted and it's rotated by those 13 positions. So this is a Caesar cipher. This is at its base a Caesar cipher or a ROT13, rotate by 13 places, uh, substitution cipher. Really, really simple, not that hard to break because obviously it's just moving one letter in the alphabet into a different letter in the alphabet, just kind of moving it over right or left those 13 places. So 13 is not too, too difficult to do because it's just in the middle of the alphabet, right, the 26 letters. And we can just do this really easily with an online tool, rotate13, or rot13.com. should just work this fine. We can paste this in, and okay, we get our password. That's that's nice and convenient. It's not too much fun when we're not doing it in the command line, though, because that's what we like to do. So I don't think this is installed in here. It's not, okay? Um, if you are on your home system outside of uh, the bandit level war game. You can use ROT13, which again may not be installed, um, but it's in the package BSD games. So you can install sudo apt install BSD games, and that will install ROT13 and Caesar. Caesar is also really handy because Caesar, you can pass it the number that you want to rotate these uh, the rotate this by. Um, so even if it's not a ROT13 cipher, you can do a for loop and just do a brute force, okay, what is the key that's being used for this rotation? Um, if it's a substitution cipher, just by shifting the alphabet, shifting letters. So if we had this original string like, like we do here, um, I'm going to get the original back. We can echo, I'm not going to use cat, because cat, it's not a file name, it's just echo to put this in center output. Let's echo this onto the screen pass it to rot13 and that works just fine as well. Cool. This is a uh, what level is this? Ben at 12? Yeah. Cool. Let's break out of here and just like that, we're moving through them. All right. Rot13, Caesar cipher. Now, this case Passive for the next level is stored in data.txt, which is a hex dump of a file that has been repeatedly compressed. For this level, it may be useful to create a directory in the temp folder. Okay, cool. So we're moving into temp. Get a new home. What do we got? We have data.txt. And this is a hex dump. You can see all the kind of hex bytes and bits and stuff kind of in the middle here. The ASCII representation that it's trying to use over on the right side and then the number as it's reading through these these bytes on the left. So let's make a home for us in temp. Make directory forward slash temp. I'm going to say John, and let's copy data.txt to that directory. Cool. Let's get there. Change directory into where you just moved to. And this data.txt is a hex dump, and we can assume that it was put together by this command xxd. XXD is typically a built-in hex dump tool or program uh, in the Linux command line, and it can make a hex dump in that format that we've just seen, or it can do the reverse. It can uh, repair or take the hex dump and bring it back to the original like raw binary bytes file. So let's try and see how that looks. If we did XXD, said it was tack reverse, right? And it needs probably the file that we're working with, so data.txt, and cool. Now we've got all this raw, gross bytes, but we can store this in a file. Let's redirect this with that greater than symbol, that waka waka arrow, to uh, bring it to like something, right? And that'll be our new file. So now that it's there, we can run file on something and try and identify what this thing is. And 
it tells us that this is gzip compressed data. It was originally data 2.bin, but it uh, is not right now. Now it's compressed. So if it's gzip compressed data, we can g unzip or gunzip, I like to say, on that file. We can gunzip something, and it'll say, oh, I don't know the suffix. Ignore it. I'm not going to do anything. Okay. So gunzip and a lot of other compression tools uh, don't really play that nicely if you don't have the correct file extension. So let's move that something to something.gzip. And now we can gunzip that. Maybe it wants it as just gz, I think. Gunzip that. Oh, it did not. Okay, <laughs> it just added on that uh, that GZ at the end. So make sure make sure you have just GZ as your file extension, and obviously pass the correct file name to Gunzip. It won't give you any output, but if you check your file system, you got just something now, or the original uncompressed file. So what is that now? Ah, it's BZIP2 compressed data. Okay. Let's try and bunzip that, or be unzip, and it's bunzip too. That's a built-in, and again, utility here. Give it the file name that we're working with. It needs to know... Oh, okay, I guess it didn't know what the file name was originally, so it just guessed, but now we've got this, and it's still... Okay, gzip again. Let's move this back to where we had it before. I think this process happens a lot. <laughs> Let's kind of lather, rinse, repeat here. Oh, this is a tar archive. Okay. If you haven't seen the uh, tar command yet, it's a tape archive, another kind of common Linux archive file format, a lot like Windows has the zip archive that it's typically used to. Tar is, again, historic and traditional for Linux. Um, we can extract with tar x, and then the file that we're working with. And you may need to use tack f to format, or I'm sorry, force that from terminal, whatever, and now it's got some things extracted. It's got data5.bin, and that is apparently another tar archive, so let's tar x f. If you actually supply v here, v and f I think should always be at the end for tar for some reason. Tar is a weird thing. There's a lot of funny XKCD comics about the arguments for tar that no one really knows them, but you just say random letters. Tar x v f to see the file names that it's working through, and then let's just use the data five dot bin. Okay, now it extracted data six dot bin. What is that? That's bzip two. So let's bunzip that one. I'm sure you guys are getting the hang of this at this point. Another tar archive again. Now, another gzip. Let's move that to .gz. Gunzip. And now we have ASCII text as data8.bin. So that must be our password. And there it is. Okay, excellent. Cool. What have we got now? Let's move into uh, Bandit 13. Oh, we have a SSH key, private. A private SSH key. The password for the next level is stored in this and can only be read by user 14. For this level, you don't get the next password, but you get a private SSH key that can be used to log in to the next level. Okay, so we can use localhost to refer to the machine we're currently working on. Okay, so let's SSH kind of into ourselves here as... Can we use this SSH private key? Okay, it's... We can read it. We So we are Bennett 13, and as the group, we have the permissions just in the middle here to R for read. The RW and that hyphen at the very end is just for the 
owner, Bandit 14, but the group, the next three, um, we can just read it. So we can SSH, tack I now to use an identifier or a file with the SSH key that private as our private key that we're going to use to authenticate, not a password anymore. Um, and let's do this to ourselves, right? Localhost. And we want to specify the username. So we want to be bandit14 now. We can accept this whatever fingerprint thing. And now we're level 14. Great. Okay, the password for the next level can be retrieved by submitting the password for the current level to port 30,000. <laughs> I read it right this time. I, I was able to process that number. <laughs> that number on uh, that port on our local host, on ourself. Okay, let's do that with Netcat. So Netcat, or NC, is how we can make these connections to just different ports or specific services or connections uh, with the specific host name, in this case localhost, or any other computer with that port. So first we need to know the password for this level. We know that that is in etc. bandit pass, right? Yep, I just used tab to autocomplete there. It's a directory, but we want it for bandit 14. Cool. So we can we can copy and paste it if we wanted to, but we can just pipe that into Netcat, and Netcat will let's do this by hand first, so I can show you. Netcat will need the host name that we're trying to connect to, so localhost just to refer to this machine, just just Bandit, just the server that we're on, the war game, and then we'll use thirty thousand as our port number. It just takes this as an argument following. It doesn't need the TAC P like SSH does. That's a keen distinction between Netcat and. Um, and SSH. So nothing really happens. So if I were to just say hello, it says wrong. Please enter the correct current password. So okay, we know we are interacting with a service, and it just needs that password to copy and paste it in there, or we can just pipe it in through what we have. So netcat into localhost, 30,000, and hey, there we go. Correct. And we get the password for the next level, bandit 15. Let's break out of 14 and 13, and let's make a note for bandit 15. And we can connect to that in the next video. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you're enjoying these. Again, running through them. Bandit, learning some Linux command line stuff and getting our feet with, with a capture the flag cybersecurity war game. So hope to see you in the next video.